So it's basically about a guy who is being too nice and he talked to a woman and you can see the woman was actually into him. But the problem is, you know, attraction is malleable. So attraction can increase or it can decrease. Obviously, if you have high attraction for someone, if a woman has high attraction for you, it's easier to make things work with her. So if you screw up, you have more possibilities to screw up because she's going to forgive you for your screw ups. If she doesn't have that much attraction for you and you screw up, you're becoming weak, you're becoming needy, you're not a king essentially, she's going to ditch you. All right, so let's see what he says. He says, hi, I was going through a divorce about two years ago. This woman and I began communicating while I was still living in the marital home and going through the divorce process. She has been there for me and been very supportive through that process. A few weeks after the divorce was final, I asked her out for drinks. Nice. So obviously, during the divorce, he must have been very vulnerable, right? So he was kind of the nice guy, sort of, right? And so she probably saw his weak sides, which, um, you know, it, it's tough, right? So obviously, yes, you have to show your weak sides as well to a woman, especially once you are in a relationship. But at first, the woman needs to be able to trust your strength. Now, she probably understood that, well, this guy, he didn't, you know, he didn't have much strength right now because obviously he had a divorce, which is quite painful. So she probably forgave him. So anyway, then he says, um, um, so it's nice. You asked her for drinks right after the divorce was final. Good step. You did a good thing here. Taking action. Awesome. He then says, when we first met, we had real chemistry and it felt like we could talk for days on end about life, relationships or anything. I felt like we just clicked and had this connection I hadn't, held, I hadn't felt in forever. We ended the night with a kiss on the lips. Nice. So that's a good thing. Always make a kiss happen. You need to push forward and show a woman that you got what it takes to take action. Good step. So then he says, after that, we met for a couple of dinners and I'd gotten takeout for us. All of these nights ending with big long hugs and kisses on the cheek and a couple simple kisses on the lips. Shortly after our last time having dinner together, it was confirmed that she was moving out of state for her new job. This was also the night we kissed and hugged the most. And what do you see missing here? No sex. So how many dinners did you have? You didn't mention the exact time, but it sounds like you had at least two, three, four dinners. I would seduce a woman on the second dinner probably, right? So a woman wants to see that you can take action and she wants you. That's why she's having dinner with you. Right? You just need to facilitate for it to happen. So you're not making it happen. Disappointment. She was anticipating it. So he then says, um, so obviously he left the city. She was about to leave the city. They had one last kiss and hug. Um, she left the state, basically, for a new job. So then he says, we still have been texting, but it seemed she was backing off even more and we were not doing much texting. I have been backing off a bit too since I'm not getting too much in return. Good step. So obviously, long distance and the texting back and forth gets really boring, to be honest. I mean, you want to be physical with a person and talk to them face to face and hug them and, and look in their eyes and banter with them and have fun and jokes and all that stuff. You can't do that so much with long distance. This kind of stuff is nice when we're young because we have never experienced it. You know, love is new, but there's so much more out there. So obviously, she's backing off. She's realizing this is not something that I want right now and I can't see him. So let me back off. And you're backing off as well. Good step. You're realizing hmm, this is not going anywhere. So I think you're just realizing you're not getting much in return. It's a good thing. Um, so yeah, perfect step. So he then says, um, um, well, eventually I was able to see her one last time before she left and brought her a going away gift. We kissed and hugged me a couple of times, but she eventually stepped away and I gave her one final hug and goodbye. So, yeah, if I would have given her a gift, that's kind of too nice. I don't know. Maybe I don't know your situation, but I wouldn't have done it, most likely. Um, just you already are getting along and you're hugging and kissing and all that stuff. You know, there's affection going on. You don't need to prove yourself with a gift, okay? So that's what I would have done. He then says, about a month or so later, I, I emailed her just wanting to clear the air on our feelings and not end what we had on a sour note. Now we're getting into weak beta male territory, a lot of friend zone-ish stuff. 
So why did it end on a sour note? It didn't. This girl liked you, you liked her, you hugged and kissed multiple times, you had multiple dates. The only problem was that she was moving away. So there was no sour note. The only sour note was, oh man, I would have loved to see you more often. I would have loved to have sex with you. I would have loved to be in a relationship with you. I would have loved to date you. But the stars didn't align for us. There's no sour thing going on there. You're probably telling yourself that there's something sour going on. So he then says, well, she ended up typing back with an honest response and even told me she was crying after reading it. That she did have feelings for me at that point and that and still did when she read the letter. She said she missed me and missed us hanging out. So obviously the girl really likes you. If the attraction from that girl would be much, much lower, or let's say woman, she's a very adult woman. Um, you know, if she would have a lot of attraction, uh, wouldn't have a lot of attraction, she would be less inclined to reply to this. She would probably be turned off by this kind of stuff. Okay, but because she obviously liked you and you had a lot of dates, you know, she wanted more. But it didn't happen. So you got a good response when you sent her a letter. So you're lucky. You're really lucky because in a lot of cases this wouldn't work. He then says, it seems she is also very guard. She's also a very guarded woman for many reasons and was also having a hard time keeping her feelings in check. That she did have feelings for me back when we first met and still did till that day. Also, she said she even ended up falling in love with me. She said I was an easy man to fall in love with. She ended up opening her heart up to me and wasn't sure what to do from that point going forward. Well, I would have just said, like, yeah, great. I mean, I, I love you too, babe. Or maybe not necessarily love you because it's too soon. But um, yeah, I love you too. And uh, or I love being around you. And, you know, next time that we see each other, you know, let's spend some extra time, extra quality time together. You know, make her anticipate it, right? She wants it. Secretly, she wants it. You know, deep down, she's really into you. It's just not working out right now. So just reaffirm her, right? Just don't be too overboard with it. So he then says, and this is where it really slowly starts to get bad. Because he was really having, you know, he had this in the back. This girl really liked him. He says, well, we texted a bit more and I followed up that last letter with one that she felt came on too strong because it gave her the impression I thought we were dating or could date. Well, yeah, I wouldn't just send a letter at all. You're just dating or you know each other and you're talking and chatting. It's like, why are you sending her a whole letter about your feelings, man? It's like, you haven't seen this woman in who knows how long. I don't know how long you haven't seen her, but it must be weeks or months. So why would you send her a long letter? <laughs> that letter, if ever, would belong to whatever woman you would be dating right now. Now, generally, I would just recommend don't send these kind of letters. You don't need that stuff. Just make things happen. See the girl, kiss her, hug her, have fun. And that's all you need. You don't need to you know, spill out your feelings on, a pen, on pen and paper to convince a woman that you are the shit and she wants you. No. She already knows that you are the shit. That's why she's interested in you. But once you vomit out your feelings, she, she you know, the, the thing with that is, I have the saying, right? Um, if, she dis if she can deceive, she will leave, right? Meaning basically, if a woman knows that she can manipulate you, if a woman knows that you are, you know, too easy to string along and too easy to abuse, use, use is the better word, to, to use you for her gains, she'll leave you. And she can definitely tell that with that letter. It's like, what the heck? You know, so she, he says, she ended up, she ended our communication right there and blocked my phone number and on all social media. So I figure it's done and over. We move on and go our separate ways. So it's a bit weird that she blocks you. I don't know what that letter was. The letter must have been way too strong because, I mean, even if that letter would be really strong, you know, I think in most situations people would just be, uh, okay, this is weird. Um, this guy is way too much into me. Mm, back off. Um, so maybe she has a bad history or she's just really strange. Um, you know, maybe she does this kind of stuff all the time. Or your letter was really just way too strong. I don't know. But it's a bit odd, to be honest. Then he says, well, about two weeks ago, I was on a dating site and I found her online. Seems she moved back home and was working virtually for her job that moved her out of state. 
Well, I pulled the trigger and said, what's up, stranger? She replied about a minute later and said, I'm good. Not a minute after I read her response, I got a text saying I could text her here. The text just got rolling from there. So obviously there's still some attraction. At this point, we don't know if this woman, you know, is just using it as a convenience. I would have thought, why would you swipe her right? I wouldn't have done that, to be honest, because she blocked you. She made it clear that, okay, I'm out of here. So why would you want to be with this woman? We are kings. We deserve a woman who wants to be with us. A woman who's into you will always find ways to be with you, not find ways to avoid you or make excuses. She made a major excuse by blocking you, okay? She was like, I'm out of here. Yes, you probably screwed up with your message. I don't know what the letter was. Still, she made her choice. So sayonara, that's what I would have done. Anyway, um, he says, my thought, though, was that she blocked me from all social media. My first thought, though, was that she blocked me from all social media sites and texts as I was never able to get through to her. She said she was having phone issues during that time and that she was emotional. She was an emotional, hormonal bitch to me and also apologized for me. Sure. Um, maybe she was, I mean, she probably was, something was going on. Maybe it was emotionally and hormonal. And, you know, whatever the reason is why she thought, okay, I'm going to block this guy. Whether it was on your end, mostly on your end, or also partly her, <laughs> she definitely did not have phone issues, man. <laughs> She's just telling that. I, I, would, I would call a woman out on this. You know, if a woman tells you this kind of crap, like, how the heck can you have phone issues? No, I was blocked. I could not see your profile. I could not respond to you. Or I could not, or maybe I could send messages, but I could clearly see that you didn't read them. Come on, I'm not, I'm not stupid, okay? And if you're going to pretend that I'm stupid, I don't want to date you, okay? So just tell me the truth at least, all right? You got to hold women accountable for their BS. Otherwise, they will always push you around. So he then says um, she too was having some, um, she too was having some health issues going on. So for about a week, I waited for her to follow up and try to pursue me via text. Well, the next three days, she texted me back with a response from what we were chatting about the night before or from me telling her to have a good day. So I thought since we had communicated well that I would continue. I was just following her lead. Yeah, you always wait and see what the woman does. If the woman initiates, you pull it back, put it back into her side. You know, you send some messages, tell her something, something flirting or a question or whatever, or you set up a date, you know. But you always want to make sure this back and forth, back and forth. And typically, you want to make sure that it's the woman who initiates that. Because women are about connection. Women are the ones who do the choosing. We men don't have much choice in the matter, to be honest. Um, we all know this. If a woman is into us, you know, she gets to decide. She gets to decide, for the most part, when to have sex. Sure, we can is initiate it. But, you know, if she's not in the mood, can't do anything about it. Right? Women do the choosing. So... You know, um, back and forth, back and forth with the messages. So that's good. Then he says, um, um, then later in the week, I texted her and told her to have an awesome day at work. And she said she'd try. I told her she's got this and that if she needed to bend, I was here. She said, oh boy, I could bend. I asked if it was about life, work or other stuff. And she said, it's about all. I said, well, if you need to talk later, I'm here for you. She said, okay, cool, thanks. Now we're getting into nice guy territory again. Of course, we need to be emotional support for the women that we're with. But you're not with this woman, okay? You're getting into friend zone territory where she can get emotional support while not being in a relationship with you. Now, you know, obviously there's nothing wrong with helping a person. There's nothing wrong with helping a woman. But it all needs to be moderation. So I'm going to get to this. What are you, you going to say here? He says, later in the evening, I checked back in on, in on her and she was doing better. We then started flirting and it eventually asked if she wanted to talk and that I could come over and bring some dinner and drinks. She said, okay, so I grabbed takeout and I took it over along with a couple drinks. So yes, that's what you should have said in the first place. Just as soon as she's venting and has problems, I would say, wow, um, you seem to be having a hard time. Why don't you just come over or why don't I come over? I bring some drinks. Let's talk about it. Let's have a fun time. Let's, let's distract you a little bit, okay? And that's what I would have done straight away because you want to avoid that that possibility of a woman just using you for friends on for emotional support because women do this i know this sounds harsh but there are many women who just string along men for their emotional needs and then they find the sex 
and the passion and the fun, the excitement from other guys, which are typically the alphas, right? And you want to be an alpha who's a king. You're still there for support, but you also know what you want. You want that woman, you want sex, you want the relationship. So don't just settle for only the emotional part. You get everything or nothing. That's what a king does. Okay, he then says, um, um, so he grabbed the drinks and they had a cup. They, they, he took over, had some drinks. And then um, she texted a few minutes later, be nice to see you. And I replied with looking forward to seeing you too. When I got there, I walked in and we hugged and kissed each other on the cheek. We then had dinner and, and she said she would buy next time. I'm a bit confused, by the way, how that works because I thought she's, oh, right, she's back in your city. Um, so we got in there, walked in, hugged and kissed each other on the cheek. We then had dinner and she said she would buy next time. So we then talked for about three and four hours, but never brought up where we stand or anything with us. Yes, good. You shouldn't bring that up. You just, just kiss her, make out until you seduce her. He has this habit. Look at this. He's doing it again. No sex. So he must be probably afraid of making the next step. That's why he sends the letter. This is why you are looking for validation from this woman. But you already got the validation. The fact that you got invited to her place or you invited yourself and then it actually happened. She said, yes, sure. That's validation, man. She wants you already. She's opening doors. You already walked through it. But then it's like you don't realize that the lights are actually on. You think that you're standing in a dark room and you're about to eject and leave the room. No, you're in a room full with lights. And this woman wants you to become passionate with her, physical, seducer. She wants to get going and you're not getting going here. So he then says, that night I got home and sent her the text. You shouldn't have even gone home, dude. That's the thing, okay? That night I got home and sent her a text saying, it was great spending time with you tonight and looking forward to seeing you again soon. Uh, I loved you with the short hairdo. It looked cute on you again. Now you're trying to be pleasing, woman pleasing, you know, being a nice guy because you're looking for validation. And, you know, you're saying here, it was great spending time with you tonight and looking forward to seeing you again. Well, why should you? Why, why should she? Like, she's going to get the same thing again. No sex. You're not going to make a move. Then she might as well just keep you on the back burner, message you every now and then when she needs you for emotional support. Essentially. And um, then he says, um, have a great, he says, have a great night and sleep well. After that, she typed back the next day. So, you know, she probably ignored the message already because she's like, oh, you know, no sex. You know, like this guy just doesn't have what it takes. And, uh, you know, nice to see you too. <laughs> nice to see you too. I'm just a bit disappointed that there was no sex. So he then says, I'm thinking I came on too strong. So I waited a few days to type back and asked for her weekend, how her weekend was and never heard back. As of now, I haven't heard from her in about a week. Yes, so you can see you have a pattern here. You're always coming on too strong, but you're never taking the necessary action to seduce her. So, you know, she's probably had enough of, of it at this point. And she's like, okay, she's probably talking to another guy who's making moves. Maybe he already is sleeping with her. And, you know, once you have sex, you build an emotional bond that you know, emotional connection obviously is important, but sex plays a major role as well because of the hormone, hormones that, that you know, um, peak when we're having sex. So, you know, if she's having sex with someone else, that guy is basically winning. That's just a fact. No matter how nice you are, it doesn't matter. No matter how much emotional support you give to her, that's not everything that a person needs. We need more than just emotional support. So... He says, so I'm wondering what the heck happened here, happened for her to just cut me off again. Why I ended this way? Is there anything still there or not? Is she confused about what she wants? Is she playing hard to get or just pushed me away one final time but not mature enough to let me down? Is she just playing me as a backup? If after meeting some new people she decides we'll go back because he'll have me back, so that just bring me along and I basically answered all these questions. You know, I always say this, a woman who trusts discovers her lust. She does not trust you. She does not trust you to be strong. She trusts you emotionally. She trusts that she can come to you and you'll be there to listen to her 
whatever needs she has. You know, if she messages you again in two months from now, you'll be there and then you'll be like, oh, you want to went? Fine. You don't want to talk to me. You have some problems. Hey, I'm here for you. And then maybe you will come over again. Maybe she don't have enough time. You come over again, again, no sex, nothing's happening. And meanwhile, there's some other dude who's banging her and is having the greatest time of his life. Maybe he's a total dick. Maybe he is not good with emotional support and he's a horrible boyfriend, but it doesn't matter. You know, she probably thinks, well, he's probably going to change over time. And, you know, the more time we spend together, I probably can make sure that he becomes a bit more emotionally supportive. You know, he probably needs his time. And while that happens, she has you. So, yeah, she's probably, she's probably not consciously stringing you along because she's an evil bitch. I don't think so. She just realizes, well, I'm not getting anything out of there. Like the same thing that you said when you said, okay, I started texting her because I wasn't getting anything out of it. She's not getting anything out of it as well. She's getting her emotional support, but she's not getting sex. She's not getting a relationship because you're too fearful. You're like, you're basically always like there. Hey, pretty please, can I get your affection? And, you know, I don't know if I'm worthy of your love. That's not what a king would do. That's, that's not a king. That's not even a tyrant. That's just, I don't even have a word for that. It's a peasant. And you don't want to be a peasant, obviously. <laughs> you want to be a king. So, you know, you have to take action. You know, this woman actually really liked you. She was really into you. But you didn't make it happen. So, lesson learned. If she ever messages you again, I wouldn't message her now. Um, you know, you're, um, you screwed up here a little bit with being too much of a nice guy that turned her off. She would clearly had high attraction for you. Otherwise, you would have never gotten this far. So wait for her to hopefully message you again. Set up a date. Don't become the emotional support bag. You know, sure, you can message a little bit, but just make a date happen. And then... Dude, you have to seduce that woman. You already brought wine or whatever, drinks. Like, how much easier does it have to be for you to seduce a person? You know, uh, this probably sounds bad, but, you know, obviously, don't get her too intoxicated. But the point is, you know, if a person had two or three glasses of wine, you know, and that person likes you, it should be so freaking easy to seduce that person. She wants it. Now she wants it even more. So make it happen, man. That's the only thing that I can tell you. So that's my final verdict. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you agree with this take? Or maybe you don't agree with this take. If it was very helpful for you, then of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me a thumbs up. Smash that like button. And follow my other social profiles.